Today, we are gonna use the ultimate shortcut trick to answer a very challenging data sufficiency question in, well, an easy and fast way. I'm gonna walk you through it step-by-step step so you can see how it's done. Also, just for being here today, I have a free gift for you, three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. These are the very same strategies I teach all of my private students, so I know they work really well, they're gonna help you a lot, and they're free. You can download yours right there in the description. Okay, let's get on to that data sufficiency example. A music enthusiast bought two jazz albums and seven classical albums. After she purchased more jazz and classical albums, the ratio of jazz to classical albums was two to three. How many jazz albums did she add? Okay, we always go to the question, figure out exactly what we've been asked to do, and then write it down. In this case, we're being asked for the number of added jazz albums. We'll call that J. All right, next step. We go back to the question, we figure out what variables we've been given, and we write down any equations that we've been given. So we know that J is the number of added jazz albums, that's what we've been asked to find. So we'll say C is the number of added classical albums, which means the equation we've been given is two plus J, because she started with two jazz albums, and then added J more, over seven plus C. She started with seven classical albums, and then added C more. That's a ratio of two to three, or that equals two over three. Okay, we can just cross multiply that out. We do a little algebra, and we find that the equation we get is three J equals two C plus eight. Okay, that means we have been given one equation, but we have two variables. We cannot solve for the exact value of J if we have only one equation but two variables. So the strategy is we need the same number of equations as we have variables in order to solve for J. So we're given two variables, so we need a total of two equations. Now they've already given us one equation in the question, so we just need one more equation and we can solve for J. Let's look at each statement. Let's see if we get another equation. Number one says she added one and one third more jazz albums than classical albums. What does that mean in math? That means J equals four thirds C. Hey, we said we needed one more equation in order to solve for J and we got one more equation. That's sufficient. Number two, she added a total of 16 albums. What does that mean in math? That means J plus C equals 16. We said we needed one more equation because we need a total of two equations if we have two variables, and we got one more equation. That is also sufficient. The answer in this case is gonna be D. And I know what some of you are thinking, wait a minute, are you telling me all I have to do is count the number of equations and count the number of variables, and that's gonna work on the test? Yes, yes, it's gonna work almost all the time. Okay, very good job. Okay, I know that some of you still don't believe that just counting equations and counting variables is a reliable way to solve these questions because it feels uncomfortable, right? What you want to do is you want to solve all the way to J so that you know for sure you can get a number. But the truth is, first of all, you don't have that kind of time. And second of all, data sufficiency is not asking you for the value of J. Data sufficiency is asking you, do you have enough information to solve for J? And the truth is, if you have the number of equations that equal the number of variables, yes, you will have enough information. So you're gonna to wanna to use this strategy. Whenever you're in a data sufficiency question that asks you for a specific value and you're given equations in this statements, either straight out math equations or equations in word problem form, which is kind of the way we got them in this example. This is gonna work actually over 90% of the time. Yes, occasionally they trick you, but not very often. It's only about 10% of the time, maybe. And if you keep watching these videos, we're gonna show you how to spot when they try and trick you. Okay, nice job. All right, great job. If this video was helpful to you, please remember to hit either the like or subscribe buttons. Also, don't forget about your free gift. Three simple strategies to raise your GMAT score 30 points today. It's yours for free. You can download it right in the description. Okay, see you next time.